I don't know. He's been trying to spit game this whole freaking show to every female that's in the chat. So, uh, they keep trying, man. <laughs> about the moments that led up to the death of an LSU student, Madison Brooks. Now, police arrested four people in connection to her death. However, none are being charged with murder at this time. NBC Local 33's Anum Siddiqui breaks down the case. Deputies say four men are connected to the death of 19-year-old Madison Brooks. The <laughs> wow. Wow. <sighs> Thank God there's one quieter. She had a rough night, man. I can tell, man. That was a hell of a that was that was a rough night on her, Madison. Damn, Madison. How did you all American too? This is the all American girl. This is the girl that, you know, nothing can happen to, man. Mm. Of 19-year-old Madison Brooks, the LSU sophomore was standing on Burbank Drive when she was hit and killed by a vehicle in the early morning hours of January 15th. According to the East Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office, 18-year-old Kavion Washington and an unnamed 17-year-old are charged with third-degree rape. Louisiana law states a third-degree rape charge involves cases where the victim is incapable of resisting or of understanding the nature of the act because of intoxication. 27-year-old Everett Lee and 18-year-old Kaysen Carver were both charged with principal to third-degree rape meaning they were present but did not take part in the alleged crime. Carver told police the men met Brooks at a bar in Tigerland. Records show Carver then told police the woman asked for a ride home. Carver said he noticed Brooks... What do you think about that um, fisherman, this girl asking for a ride home with those guys? I mean, you know, if I've said it once, I'll say it a thousand more times. They just have no street knowledge at all. They're like they're like golden retriever puppies. They just go running into the arms of anybody that makes eye contact with them. They just don't know any better. Yeah, that, that's that was just a bad fucking decision, bitch. That was a death like and you hate to say this, but that decision leads to death <laughs> like she 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 died fucking after making that decision and you know most people here like could probably be like yeah if you make that decision you probably die because of intoxication. 27-year-old Everett Lee and 18-year-old Kaysen Carver were both charged with principal to third-degree rape, meaning they were present but did not take part in the alleged crime. Carver told police the men met Brooks at a bar in Tigerland. Records show Carver then told police the woman asked for a ride home. Carver said he noticed Brooks was unable to speak clearly without slurring her words. Investigators say Brooks had a blood alcohol level of 0.319. That's nearly four times the legal limit. With the blood alcohol that high in anyone of any age, that is approaching alcohol poisoning. Family medicine Dr. Ronald Andrews says that blood alcohol level can lead to a coma and possibly death. Anytime you get above 0.25, um, percent alcohol intoxication, that is when you start getting into trouble with your balance, trouble walking straight without assistance. Police say after the alleged rape, the men dropped Brooks off near Pelicans Lake subdivision. That's where she was hit by a car and later died at the hospital. Underage drinking is a problem, not only here in Baton Rouge or Louisiana, but nationwide. And it's something that we all as parents uh, and medical providers need to talk to our children about. Attorney Ron Haley is representing the primary suspects, Lee and Washington. Haley says the sex was consensual. Dr. Andrews says at a blood alcohol level of 0.319, consent is nearly impossible. Someone in that state probably needed medical help uh, instead, unfortunately, how this story turned out. Mm. Maybe that's why she asked for a ride. Um. That could make more sense. She she just was 
you know, maybe she, maybe she just fucking the bad of a man. Say thank you. And continuing coverage tonight, about a dozen people are recovering this evening after a weekend shooting at a Baton Rouge nightclub. Fox 44's Jessica Knox. Wow, there was a dozen people shot at a nightclub in Baton Rouge. Wonder why we didn't hear it on the news. High humidity. Damn. Any, you guys have noticed that any city you go to, any city, same shit. Weekend shooting at a Baton Rouge Smash nightclub. Fox 44's Jessica Knox joins us live now from outside Club Dior. That's located near College Drive and I-10. Jessica, what's the latest? Hey, Kellyanne, that is correct. I was able to speak to the parents of Michael Henderson, who was the DJ at Club Dior during the night of the shooting. We are also getting a inside look just moments after the shooting happened at Club Dior. I ask that everyone pray for strength, not just for him, but the other victims as well. We are getting an inside look from Club Dior moments after the shooting. In the video, you can hear screams from the crowd following the shooting that left 12 injured, including Michael Henderson, better known as DJ Rel. I received a call from a friend, from his girlfriend, that called me and said he has been shot. My feelings was everywhere. I didn't know if my child was alive. Henderson's parents say he was DJing the party when he was shot in the hip. His laptop, as you can see here, was also hit with gunfire. Well, he was, the bullet did go through the hip, and that is correct. He was at work. He was at work when he got shot. He was doing his job, what he does. Working at a sun club. <laughs> it's hazardous work there, bro. Well, DJ. Ralph has been DJing in the Baton Rouge community for more than eight years. He is known for always being the life of the party. They say with intense therapy, he should have a great recovery. This would not stop him from being DJ Rev. I can tell you that right now. For his Mike Mike, He's still laughing right now. He's taking it in a stride. It's a situation that happened, and he's going to live forward to this. That's it. Baton Rouge Police Department is asking anyone with any information to please contact Crime Stoppers. That number is at the bottom of your screen. Three. Wow. Notice how nobody died, and they haven't caught the suspect yet. Twelve people were shot, and no one died. <laughs> that's almost like so bad it has to be intentional like that's just on like are you just like pointing it at the floor and closing your eyes nah the people got shot so they obviously not point, he, pointing it at the floor it's just, I mean I know but it's just like that's so bad <laughs> over 12 and the tigers are like the one tiger over here is what's what seven for seven like, what, like seven for seven today the other one was 10 for 20. Good evening, I'm Sydney Simone. You're watching Fox 44 News first at nine week in edition. We begin with a mass shooting happening overnight at a local nightclub, leaving a dozen people injured. Jessica Knox reports on this investigation. A dozen people continue to recover after a shooting at a nightclub called Dior. Baton Rouge Police Sheriff Murphy Paul says three officers were in the parking lot when the shooting happened and credits three officers were in the parking lot that's one thing that's different neither one of those tigers did those shootings if officers were in the parking lot that's sud man shit right there is them for keeping things from getting worse those police officers immediately responded to the threat and we believe their immediate response prevented further injuries the victims were taken to local hospitals either by personal vehicles or by EMS. Three of the victims are suffering life-threatening injuries. At this point, we can say that uh, it is believed to be a targeted attack and that no, this was not just a random act of someone showing up and randomly shooting citizens of Baton Rouge. At this point, like the chief said, we have detectives in the field following up on all leads. We have to get it right. Uh, and sometimes getting it right means I can't give you that information right now. Community members say this shooting brings many concerns. This one not so close to our neighborhood. This one is more of a cleaner and, and 
pressure and more going by the rules environment into his. <laughs> what is he trying to say? Somebody translate what he just said. I don't know. We have the subject matter sure. experts. This one not so close to our neighborhood. This one and more of a cleaner and, and fresher and more going by the rules environment. And to hear that inside of a club shooting wow on that side is just mind blowing. I had to. Just... No one can translate that. I guess you're saying on the nice, it makes sense that this is happening on the rough side of town, but on the nicer side, it's a surprise to see that, you know, a club would get shot up. It's a white neighborhood. I, this guy's not gay, y'all. He's just a regular Southern head. No yeah, way. Hell, dude. This guy's. Look at his he, damn he's shirt. No, that, that, that guy's not gay. That guy's just a regular Southern man. Mm, I don't know about that. I promise you. This is not a gay club. Oh, I promise you. Well, hold It on. doesn't have to be a gay club. What the hell? Well, he's not openly gay. I don't mm -hmm. think this guy's openly gay. I think this guy, this is how some son been at. Any concerns? This one not so close to our neighborhood. This one and more of a cleaner and, and fresher and more going by the rules environment and to hear that inside of a club shooting wow on that side is just mind blowing. I have it's mind blowing and scary. Deputy Chief Myron Daniel says the owner of the club is corroborating with officials to bring justice to the victims. Alcohol, beverage, and control will also be investigating. Some of the items that they will be looking into will be the uh, security breach that occurred from the uh, private security that was working at the event. Jessica Knox, Fox 44 News. And if you know anything about the incident, you're urged to contact Crime Stoppers. That number is right there on the bottom of your screen. 225-34. Wow. This little fucking town. Wow. Yeah, they need to start patting down and scanning everybody that goes in there. I'm sure they did. Somebody just got a gun inside, man. No, just somebody. I I wouldn't say slipped through the cracks. Maybe somebody allowed. Um, Maybe our fruity friend slipped it up his crack. God damn. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Um, Until people get over the fact that it's just going to be a prison population that's majority sunmen, we're never going to fix this shit. Yeah, it is what it is, man. It is what it is, man. Um, there's, there's really no way around that. And, and it's going to be that, whether they deal with it or not. Yeah, exactly. It's like, just accept reality for what it is. And go about your business. Yeah, pretty much it, man. Um, salute to everybody, man. I'm gonna get out of here, man. Come back strong tomorrow, man. Salute to all you guys, man. Peace out. Have a good night. Peace out.